Hello buddy, my name is Eric and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Windows 11 virtual machine. This has been one of the most requested uh, videos with GP pass through and all of that. Now first of all, I will go over what we're going to cover and what we will not be covering. I will cover how to set up all of this software, I will cover how to install Windows, how to pass through a graphics card, how to use Looking Glass so you can use that graphics card just like it was a VM or a VM rather than having to use a dedicated monitor and keyboard. What I will not be covering is the ins and outs of modifying QEMU source code to make it harder to detect or editing the Linux kernel to get around timing checks. The reason for that is simply because A, it would make the video really long, and security by obscurity. A lot of the things I do are, would not be that complicated to detect if someone put the effort into it. I might put it privately, but I'm not going to put it in a public YouTube video. Now before we get into the software side of this, I did just want to go over the hardware requirements and the fact that they're pretty steep. What you will need to achieve the setup that I'm using is a motherboard with sane IOMMU support. Uh, you can uh, Google around if you're shopping for motherboards. In my experience, high-end desktop platforms, that is AMD Threadripper and whatever Intel has for that right now, generally work better. And you will need two graphics cards, which in addition to any cost of owning two graphics cards, it can be quite challenging to fit two graphics cards in a system these days. Given SLI is uncommon and graphics cards have gotten a lot bigger, and more power hungry. So you may, depending on which two graphics cards you choose, have to do something creative with your power supply or power supplies. Once you've got two graphics cards physically installed in the computer, you are ready to go. So now let's get into the tutorial. So first of all, let's install our dependencies. I am on Arch Linux. Depending on what you're on, this is going to vary. So you will want to install Looking Glass. You can do that from the AUR. If you have an AUR helper such as Yay, you can just do it this way. Otherwise, you'll have to download it manually. Now for the main software we need, we'll do Yay S or Pac-Man S, QEMU full, libvirt. Now libvirt and vert manager are technically optional dependencies, but they will make your life a lot easier. So I strongly recommend them. Now, I'm not going to run this command because I already have them installed and I don't want to overwrite my QEMU. If you're wondering the basics of how you modify source of an Arch package, the easy way to do it is you do ABS clone and then you're good to go. Now, there's something else we'll have to do if we want to pass through graphics. Now, the next step for dedicated GPU pass through is to edit our bootloader's kernel parameters. But before I show you how to do that, we're going to break for a quick message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by AnyRun. AnyRun is an easy, batteries included solution that works out of the box that allows you to quickly and effortlessly test files for malicious behavior, customize your options, create a private sandbox where you can try out the file with whatever analysis tools you want, that you can do it simply, and you can do more complicated stuff. In addition, the sandbox is fully interactive, meaning you can click around the window and interact with the application. AnyRun has an easy to use interface to find all file IO and network activity done by the process in addition to both process level and overall classification of malicious activity. With AnyRun solutions, employees save time on analysis, productivity, and improve their efficiency. You can do it now by clicking the link in the description. Now here you can see my grub config, which is a critical part of setting this up. So, of course, here we have, uh, th this is irrelevant, this is an important part. If you're on AMD, you need this. If you're on Intel, you've got to do Intel IOMMU. That just enables IOMMU. Uh, and then the other thing we need is if we're using a dedicated graphics card. I already made a video a few years ago about single GPU. But if we're doing this the easier way with a dedicated graphics card, we have to find these PCI IDs and then we have to blacklist them. So how do we get the IDs? Well, the easiest way is simply to use a small batch script that I'll, I'll get here from the Arch wiki. I'll include a link to this article in the description and we'll just uh, make this. This also checks your IOMMU groups. Now, if you don't have good IOMMU groups on your motherboard, there are ways of hacking around that, but it, it does create potential security issues. Ideally, your motherboard 
will put each physical PCIe slot into its own group. Most higher end motherboards will do that, but consumer motherboards may not. So here we have this script, it's pretty straightforward. So we do bin bash, shell opt, and then for G in IOMMU groups, we then trace through these with find, we echo the group, and then for each of the devices, uh, we call this. Now what we need, and that's why we do the device part uh, for the pass through, is the number over here, the device ID, not the PCI ID. So now that we've run that command, we can scroll up and find what we're looking for. Now here is what I use for pass through. Some people have commented on the graphics card choice. So this is the graphics card I actually use, and this is the one that the virtual machine uses. Now these are the IDs. Now one trouble, if you have two identical graphics cards, you may have to use a different method. But for us, we can just do that. So we copy and paste both of these and we put them into this VFO underscore PCI dot IDs equals 10 DE 10 0 F 0. And then we do that for the second one as well. They're just comma separated. Now you may wonder, uh, what, are, what are these other two parameters here? They're not relevant for this. This one is because when you're using a, it's only the latest Threadrippers and Epics, but if you're using a CPU that has five level paging, uh, that doesn't work with VMware. And this one is to block uh, onboard graphics. Uh, if you're not using a server motherboard, you don't need that one. So now that we've got everything set up, and of course you have to reboot and then do boot grub grub.cfg. Run that as sudo, and your grub config is now updated. So now let's go over the actual making of the virtual machine. So we open up Virtual Machine Manager, and then we go and we create a new virtual machine. Now, we choose connection. We should be connected to QEMU KVM. Go to Local Install Media, Network Install, Import Existing Disk Image, Manual Install, and we can also see Architecture Options. That would just be if you wanted to emulate something, so we're not going to use that. Now we can choose our ISO. I'm going to just use the latest retail Windows 11 ISO. It's what I would recommend you use. Uh, this is the one case where it's not a terrible idea to use a, a slim ISO if you wanted to do this faster. I wouldn't bother, but you can use something like Ghost Spectre if you want. Now you can choose what you want to give your VM. Really, this just depends on what you have. I usually give my VMs a lot of resources because sometimes I'm going to try decompiling something or even just extracting files. You can sort of feel the difference. So I usually go with 65 gigabytes of RAM or 64 and 32 cores. Uh, anything for Windows above 8 gigabytes and 2 cores is perfectly fine. We create the disk image. Size doesn't hugely matter here. It won't, it's a small file, so it won't take up any space that you don't use. Just don't give it more than is available because that could create a, a glitch. So now we can call, we'll choose a name for this virtual machine. I uh, will call this guide. And now we can do the customized configuration. So set up the network. I'm just going to use the default NAT. Now here are our settings. Now a while later we will have to change some of this. But I always do the install without pass through because it's just much easier. One thing you will want to do if you're on Windows is manually set the CPU topology because Windows or Windows doesn't support more than two physical CPUs out of the box. And for whatever reason, most virtualization software defaults to multi-CPU rather than multi-core. So now we've got the VM open. Now we just install Windows like we usually do. Now if you choose Windows 11, to my understanding, it will automatically uh, should. No, it didn't. Okay, so we may get run into an issue here. I'll show you how to fix that. But yeah, so if we get this error, what we have to do is add an emulated or a pass-through TPM. Depending on what you're doing, you can choose either. My uh, soft TPM installation is broken, so I'm just going to use pass-through. And with that setting changed, uh, let's see if we can now uh, have everything work. Now, I would always recommend for malware testing Windows 11 Pro. Simple reason. If you want to disable Windows Defender, you need group policy. You can't. You can do it with the reg key, but it's just easier with Pro. So I, I always use Pro. Other reason you might want it is if you're uh, trying to run anti-cheat games in a VM and you want to use the Hyper-V method, you're going to need Windows Pro. Another benefit of choosing Pro is that you can bypass the Microsoft account by just using Domain Join it instead. Of course, uh, 
the wonder of Windows 11 is that we have to do uh, updates in the middle of this. There's no, it's not even optional anymore. So now you can name your VM, whatever you want. I always, I, I use the, I, I just refer to the host as Navi and the VMs as virtual Navi. That's what I'm into. So if you want to avoid using a Microsoft account, you can go set up for work or school. And then you go sign in options and domain join instead. Now I always turn all of these off because there's zero benefit on a VM to having these enabled. And if you're using MITM proxy, these can cloud up your network traffic. And now we go through the fun of waiting for updates. So have a Microsoft surfing game, if that's something you're into. Where you can, uh, you can surf around while Windows updates. Because <laughs> that actually, compared to like Windows 10 installation, I actually like it quite a bit. Okay, so now that we're all set up, uh, let's go through the process of adding the graphics card. I like to install Looking Glass first. Now... One thing to note, if you're using a physical graphics card, is you do have to have a monitor plugged into it. What I do, uh, given I can just use an external monitor with two inputs, uh, and that shows up. If that doesn't work, you can also, for a couple of dollars, you can buy a dummy plug, which is a device that looks like a monitor but isn't actually a monitor, so that your virtual machine doesn't need a real monitor. Just plug that into the graphics card that you have given to the virtual machine. So how do we set that up? Well, we go to the Looking Glass website. Just got to set up the browser first. You just go to download Looking Glass, looking-glass.io slash downloads. And then we go to Windows Host Binary. Just click the first one. And then we run the setup. Small screen doesn't like it for whatever reason, but it's totally safe. Now we have Looking Glass. But there is one other thing we have to do. Now just copy and paste this from a different VM. So we need to go into our XML, and we actually need to add, at the bottom down here, uh, we need to add a shared memory device. So we go to our, over, go into the bottom of our devices section, and we add a looking-glass memory device. Now the amount of memory you need to give it varies. You need something like 32 gigabytes for 1080p, and more for higher resolutions. I'm on 4K, and I'm just not that worried about 100 megabytes of RAM. So I just give it that much. What that does is it creates a shared chunk of RAM that is shared between your looking glass and your host, where the frame is transmitted from one to the other. Now, of course, we have to uh, install our graphics drivers. I just wanted to have looking glass ready so that uh, if the default monitor changed, we wouldn't have an issue. So we've got our... Oh, that same video app. I downloaded the wrong thing. We need the GeForce driver doesn't actually matter which of these you pick as long as you're on a still supported generation. If you pick an unsupported generation, you get an older driver. Luckily, because Windows, unlike Linux, uses a hybrid rather than a monolithic kernel, and the kernel driver API is stable, even if you have an older code, you can still install a driver that will work perfectly fine. So now we shut down the VM, and then we go to add hardware. And here's where we actually pass through the graphics code. So here at uh, this section, Want to make sure we got the right one it's these addresses now this is already used in other vms but that's fine just means we can't use both of those vms at the same time and here's the audio controller for our gtx 1080 you've got to pass both of those through and now our gtx 1080 will be available to the guest now if this is the first time since you've rebooted that you've started looking glass uh, enabled vm you're also going to want to do not a great idea to do 777 uh, but any uh, thing that gives you read-write uh, for everyone we need, because you cannot run the Looking Glass client as root. Uh, doing that simply gives the client and other software permission to access your Looking Glass. So now that we're in here, uh, we now have the graphics code in the VM, but it's not going to detect it until we install the driver. Now we're installing the graphics driver, and as a result, in Windows we can now see this much bigger monitor, now, once we're ready, we'll make this our main and then only display, but I'll just make sure the driver finishes installing. Also, if we go to Task Manager, we can now even see the temperature of the graphics card because it is fully passed through. And now we have our NVIDIA everything installed on our uh, VM. So we'll just go with Show Only on 2. Uh, that will disable the Spice view, but Windows uh, is smart enough to know if for whatever reason the graphics card disappears, it will 
terminate that setting. And then we just open up the Looking Glass client, and with any luck... Oh, we got a, got a cursor. Uh, everything's here. Now, one of the cool things about this is I can also integrate this with OBS. Seems our monitor settings uh, didn't quite go through, so I'm just going to fix that. Go up to Looking Glass client, and now we're on the right monitor. Now, in order to make the Looking Glass mouse work properly, we need to change uh, some settings with that. To do, we need to replace uh, the tablet, get rid of the tablet, and change uh, this one. Now, here we go. Uh, we're all ready to log in. Now, on the Looking Glass client, as you can see, everything's working properly. And we can now set everything up. Now, I like to do show only on two, so that I don't end up with Windows randomly on the uh, invisible monitor. And now that we got rid of the tablet driver, the mouse works. I, of course, like to disable mouse acceleration. I think pretty much any sane person does. And now we've got a perfectly usable VM. Now, what you do next really just depends on what you're, why you did this. Uh, you want to play games? Install them. You want to run software? Install it. Uh, audio, in my experience, has been a bit hit or miss. I don't really need it for most of what I'm doing, but there are ways of fixing that. You can also get a much better uh, mouse setup with either using evdevs or using Synergy, but I, I don't really find this Spice ones to be of any trouble. You know, the biggest benefit for me of this setup is... Uh, I, okay, I'll just tell you because OBS isn't being cooperative. But the biggest benefit to me with this setup is that using a special OBS plugin, which I can show you the plugin, kind of, uh, we can actually just directly on the OBS show the looking glass let me find that for you looking glass client here we go and we can just show this and what you're seeing now it's just like if we had a capture card except that we don't need a capture card everything that happens in the vm is now on this perfect quality no risk if you're on a stream there's no risk of accidentally leaking anything and that's also why, because some people have asked in the comments, why do I record like my news videos on this setup? Because I don't need a VM for that. Well, mainly because it gets better quality. Because what I like to do, because most a lot of people watch on a mobile device. So I'll turn this up to 300% size. Now you get a really readable view. And on the host Linux system, this is just more pain to do. So now, right, you've got a really good view. So if we wanted to talk about, for example, the 7-zip... Um, vulnerability that happened there we go we can now go on this page we got good quality we made it full screen and now we can capture this and i can tell you all about the seven zip vulnerability but a million other people have done that so i'm not actually going to so what should we do next well that's going to be all for this video please do subscribe though if you're interested in the windows debloat guide because a lot of people ask for that and that's half the reason i set up this guide vm with regular windows is so that i could go over the process of that Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more content, and tell me in the comments below what you want. Feel free to ask any questions either in the comments or in my Discord server where we got lots of people who are really interested in this kind of stuff and happy to talk about these kind of things. That's all from me. Bye.